Well, good morning. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning and welcome to our worship service. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And just maybe a few announcements before we begin. Uh, flowers on the altar, they're in memory of Lola May Christensen. And Lola May was the, or Steve or uh, Jeff Christensen's um, mother, and so we keep Jeff and Holly in our prayers uh, this day. I should also mention that um, Steve Jardine died, and the funeral service for Steve will be this Wednesday at uh, 2 p.m. So we want to keep Deb and the family in our prayers this time as well. Uh, Pastor Bill took a group of youth uh, this morning. They're heading to Colorado where they're going to have a week of well, backpacking and whitewater rafting. It sounds like it's going to be a good week, but still we pray for, for protection and that they just may have a real uh, spirit-filled week. Let's see. Next uh, Sunday, we are going to be having installation for, well, recently we called and hired uh, Andrew Moss to be our, the director of Cornerstone, and so there will be an installation at both services um, next week for that. Yeah. Okay, well, otherwise, uh, the announcements are as printed on the bullet in our bulletins, and so we will... Have the welcome, and there's a little welcome here, or a little um, statement concerning uh, Father's Day. If I could talk to each youngster, I would have one message to give them. I would say, you are important to the world. You are needed. Most of all, you can make a difference in someone else's life. Begin by doing something that shows you care. That's where satisfaction in life begins, and if one day... You get a feeling that says you can change the world. Trust that feeling because you make a difference. There is something important that needs to happen in the world because of you. And it can happen if you do it. During my 17 years as referee for San Francisco Juvenile Court, I saw hundreds of young people who refused to be buried. These words from Mary Conway Kohler speak of the power and strength that faith brings to a person's life. This is her encouragement to the young people she worked with in the midst of raging storms that they were facing. Note that nowhere does it offer shallow promises of these being made easy. Likewise, with the story of Christ calming the storm, we sometimes mistakenly Take it as an invitation to expect our storms to cease when what Jesus initially intended to do about the storms for the disciples is to be present in the midst of it. Let's stand as we sing the opening song, Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. 
when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Join together in a confession. We confess our lack of peace. We are unsettled and temporary. Our emotions drift from one point to another, keeping us on edge. We try to structure our world for maximum protection, yet we find our fortress of self sufficiency <coughs> penetrated daily. God of peace, we long for your peace. We want to know you love us and our sin is forgiven. We want to stretch out and rest in your loving arms. Forgive the distance we have placed between us. God is a great God, and God has forgiven our sin. God brings the gifts of peace, patience, and kindness. God's peace becomes ours as we give more of ourselves. Jesus' resurrection has set us free to know this peace. Praise God for the peace that surpasses all that we can understand. Let us join in singing, Draw Me Close. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. No one else will do Cause nothing else could take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find the way Bring me back to you Saturday, and I want you to look at this picture. 
Let's see if you see anything super cool about it. So we were in the park and kids were singing and dancing and this family of these two little girls that you can see there were out in the outskirts watching and I've got shivers all up and down. And I said, come over and join us. And they're like, no. I said, really, it's for everyone. So they came up and uh, the parents sat on this bench and the kids were right beside them and pretty soon they were singing and dancing um, to songs about Jesus. So um, if you ever think that BBS is not an outreach ministry, um, just look at that. So, Claire and Rach, will you come up and help me? <laughs> Claire, come on, we need you. You can do it from there, kiddo. Rach, we got it. We got it. So, we've done this song in the past where, are we going to have this side and that side? Can you and me? All right. All right. So, so this side, you're going to do G's. Can you make a G? G? Can you guys do that with your arms? Awesome. Rach and I are going to be O's. And y'all are going to do, oh my gosh, I was around Jenny way too long. You guys are going to be D's. Okay, just like Steph's doing. You're backwards. There you go, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. All right. So, so, try your G's. <laughs> You're backwards. Do this way. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You got it. You got it. Okay. Okay. All right, Ron, we're ready. That was good. That was a good children's <laughs> sermon. Perfect.
Then the Lord answered Job out of the world. Is it on? Okay, thanks. Who is that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Stand for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel is recorded in Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, 
Do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I'm fairly new to Grand Island, and so I'm getting to know the, the community, and I'm getting to know you more and more, and so I've been listening to a lot of the stories. And I find it's interesting because there's a date that people mention so often, and it's this one, June 3rd, 1980. And when people start talking about that, they, they become rather intent in the way that they share about that day. A day when an awful storm came through Grand Island with multiple tornadoes. And, and they share the story about where they were and what they were doing and how they got through this awful tornado, this tornado that well, that cost people their lives and then just so much destruction. And so when we think about natural disaster, natural disasters do happen. You know, tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, drought, fires. And so they do come. And we do have those infamous dates that we always will remember if we were living during these times but I think about you know December you know they're, they're infamous at least they live on in in history that we all hear about them December 7th 1941 September 11th 2001 and of course for people living here in Grand Island June 4th no June 3rd 1980 now, here again, I wasn't in Grand Island during the terrible storm, but I have been through, I've been in communities where tornadoes and bad storms have hit, and, and I know what that's all about. It's one of those things where you just always remember where you were and what was going on and how you got through that time. But all of a sudden, I'd find my ministry of word and sacrament turning now into a ministry of chainsaw and rake cleaning up all of the debris, all the downed trees, all the, all the, the rubble and debris all over the place. And just when you think you have it all cleaned up, then there's another big job that has to happen, and that you have to go through everybody's yard with a fine-tooth comb, all the chads, all of the nails, all the glass that's in everybody's yard, and that all has to be cleaned up. And then, of course, then there's the whole rebuilding process. But one thing that I have noticed that in life, when we think about storms, literally or figuratively, they do come. And yeah, and I have lots of stories that when storms come, how they just crush people in their lives, and it's pretty much over at that point. But then I know other people where... During these times, they get stronger. Because these, these times, they test every cell of your, of your person. What you're made of. Not, a, not only as individuals, but also as communities. Here again, I've known communities where they've gotten all broken up over something like this. But other communities where they get stronger as a result of going through. And that's what our faith does is that as we go through these difficult times of life, that we pray that God is with us, and that God is with us and he strengthens us during these times. You know, I'm one of the first ones to admit that, you know, when there's awful things on the horizon, I'm running the other way. And most of us, that's what we do. But then other times, no matter how much we prepare in life, 
no matter all the prudent and sound decisions that we make, that sometimes we find ourselves in these storms. And there's nothing that we can do to get out of them. And as we go through these difficult times, it's not easy. But we pray. We pray to God. We just pray to God, asking God that you know, we're always on calm waters throughout our lives, that nothing but sunshine and beautiful days and wonderful things. And for the most part, you know, I guess that's the way that life, that life is. And we think about all these times when God spares us from storms, when God spares us from tough times. And we have a lot of stories that we can share, saying, boy, God, you know, he, he came and he intervened during a very difficult time and spared us from a lot of problems. But then how many times does God save us and, and prevents us from bad things happening when we are not even aware of it? You ever thought about, you know, when you're all traveling and you stop for gas and and you're waiting in line, getting checked out, and it's just like, why is this service so slow? It shouldn't be taking this long. But you ever thought, well, maybe you know, all this is happening to delay you? Because if everything were lickety-split, if the service was great and the service was on time, maybe you would have been in a bad car accident. Who knows? But we just don't know of all the times when God spares us from awful things from happening. But then there are other times when God lets us go through. Why? Because that's our time of testing. It tests us to see what are we made out of? What level are we at? And when we trust in the Lord and when we bond together, we find ourselves learning so much during these times. These are the times that build character. These are the times that build strength. This is where we gain wisdom. This is the time where we come together as community. And so that's one of the things that, as we look back on that date, that the people of Grand Island, here again, as awful as that time was, is that people came together and the community is now stronger as a result of going through that time. And so that's the thing that you must remember, is that as we are challenged to say, God, you help us, and that is molding a character and a strength in ability within all of us to make us even stronger in life. Jesus' disciples had quite a story where they went into a, where they got into a boat with Jesus and they went out onto the sea and as they were out in the Sea of Galilee this terrible storm just kind of came out of nowhere and there they were. Now here again, scientifically speaking, yeah, you know, you can explain it. You know, you got, you know, Mount Hermon, the big mountain in Israel, and then you've got the Sea of Galilee that is shallow, and you've got, you know, the hills around there. And so it was known for its storms and how fast they can come up, where all of a sudden a nice calm sea becomes rather choppy. But yet, forget all of that. I think this is a storm that God created. It's kind of a, a storm that the Sea of Galilee had never seen before and never has seen since. Because these disciples in the boat, we have to understand that they were professional fishermen. They had fished this sea their whole lives. They were professional sailors. I mean, there's nothing that the sea now could bring upon them that they hadn't seen and handled in the past. But here they were, and they were in fear for their lives. They felt that this was the moment that their lives, that, that their ship was going to break up, their little boat, and uh, they were going to perish so that's the thing is when you have the professional that's white-knuckled and saying, this is it. And at that point, crying out to God, God, where are you in this moment? Isn't that kind of the feeling when we're in those moments where everything is banging around and we are being tested and we feel like everything about my life is really in peril right now? God, do you care? Jesus, hello? Are you around anywhere? And that's what the disciples were. Where is Jesus? Here he was, fast asleep in the stern of the boat. One would say, well, yeah, he doesn't seem to care at all. 
But then again, what, is, what gets us all highly anxious doesn't get God anxious. I mean, Jesus is at perfect peace sleeping on his pillow. A lot of people ask, you know, the question, why is that emphasized, the pillow? Well, I don't know. I guess we all like our pillow, don't we? My pillow, my father got it at an auction when I was eight years old. It was an antique then. It's one where it's filled with feathers, and it continues to be my pillow today. Sometimes my wife will ask, can't we just get rid of that old thing? No way. You know, this has been my pillow, and it'll be my pillow for life. I go to a motel, and it's just not quite the same. But what does our pillow communicate to us? As we're lying our head on our pillow at night and we are awake and worried, we know that's when we have trouble. Saying, God, I don't understand right now. I'm challenged beyond my abilities. I don't know what to expect and I'm afraid right now. Well, that's when we pray. We pray. God will give us a sense of peace. That the next day will come, the sun will rise, it's a new day, and we're going we're gonna to conquer whatever this is. We're going to take care of whatever this is. God's going to grant me wisdom. God's going to grant me inner strength. God's going to give me that perseverance and to understand that I'm surrounded with a community that also has got the resources that God has provided to say, we're going to get through these. In fact, in the morning, I'm going to call this certain person. I know that this person can help me out. That we lean on one another. That's the blessedness of community. It's the blessedness of, of being a member of the church. Well, Jesus woke up, and what did he do? He calmed the storm. The storm that was raging, all of a sudden now, there's peace. And now, if the disciples didn't have a lot of worry and concern to begin with, with the storm, it seems like now it's even gone to a higher level where now they're really frightened. They're kind of thinking, okay, you, the, the sea is calm, but who is this? Who is this that can speak to the hurricane out there? Peace, be still, and all of a sudden everything is still. I mean, they were in awe. They were speechless. They didn't even know what to say. We must remember that Jesus is a human, but he's also God. It's only God who can calm the storm. Who is this that can calm the storm? It is Jesus, the Savior. He's the one who can bring us calm. He's the one who can forgive us of our sins. He's the one who can alleviate our guilt. He's the one who can save us. He's the one who encourages us. He's the one who instills in us hope. He's the one who gives us strength and wisdom. He's the one who builds up character in life for us. He's the one who is with us and present, not only on those beautiful days when we say, oh, isn't this the day that the Lord has made? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, no, he's also the... Well, yeah, he is, but he's also the one who's there in the midst of the storm. We may not be quoting that verse, but he's just as much there to give us peace and calm in the midst of the storms. And so, so much of the story has to do with the church. At this point, the church can all fit into this little boat. Just Jesus' disciples, that was it. And then right now, it's like, well, the church is on the point of breaking up and being done with. And that's the thing, is that the church is so oftentimes referred to as being like Noah's Ark. The Scandinavians, they would build their churches. Well... They build them like ships. Why? Because that's the thing that they, that was the strongest thing that they knew how to build. But also it remind them of their baptisms and what the church is. It's what carries us over the tumultuous waters to salvation. And so that's the church. The church has been beaten by the, the waves of sin, death, and the devil throughout throughout these couple thousand years. And that's to show the strength of God, because if it wasn't for God, yeah, the church would have broken up 
immediately and would have been over with. But it continues to sail on. And it knows where it is going. The Scandinavians, they would actually hang a model ship from their ceiling because they were seafaring people, but also to remind them once again that, that they're members of the church and, and that they gather together and, and even know that this place gets beaten on, thinking, well, I think the church at this point is going to break up and will dissolve. But just when we think it's going to, we continue to hold on fast and we put our faith in God and he sees us through. Because that's the thing that we must always remember is that storms do not last forever. And just when we're ready to get, just when we think we're going to get, everything's going to break up, and all of a sudden we hold fast. And God brings us to that, those quiet waters again. I remember worshiping at a church in downtown Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. And, you know, you kind of know where you come from when you go visit there. It's just like, oh, yeah, now I understand. And everybody would come to church. They wouldn't really say too much. They would sit there. And after church, wouldn't say too much and would leave. It's like, yeah, well, that's who we are. That's how Scandinavian people are. We're not too animated. But yet, throughout the whole service, I knew where we were even though all of it was in Danish. But I knew where we were in the service. But after the service, the pastor, I visited with him, and he could speak fluent English. And so he's talking about, we're talking about the ship. And he said one day he had a group of kids in there, like on a field trip, and he was explaining about the church. And, of course, the kids were all interested in that model ship. And and so the pastor explained, and the kids then finally asked him the question, well, if the ship doesn't sink, then why are there lifeboats on it? And he said that's where the people who are in the ship are to go out into the lifeboats, go out into the world, and bring in those who are lost, those who need to be saved as being our mission and so that's what we continue to do. We continue to sail along through the storms of life. And as we do, we're encouraging one another. As we do, we're reaching out for two others, telling them the good news of salvation, that in Jesus Christ we have life, and that to be the church, that we are brought into the company of the saints in this life, knowing that the church and our Lord Jesus Christ will bring us to the shores of salvation. So let us always remember that when Christ is in our vessel, we can sail with the storms. Amen.
as we confess the statement of faith. We confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he takes away the sin of the world. By his name and grace, we live our lives of mission and witness for the world. We confess God is the creator of all people on earth, and has created us to live in a covenant of love established through the word and sacraments. Through baptism, we begin a new life, active through the community of believers throughout the world. We rejoice with those who rejoice, and we stand together with those who are sad. In the body and the blood of Jesus, we find the real presence of Christ and forgiveness for our sin. Within the Church of God, we accept our place as missionary, teacher, helper, and friend in order that we might serve with great purpose the Church that presently exists in the Church that is to come. Praise, blessing, honor, and glory be to God, the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for being with us in all of life. In those good days, in those good times in life where we celebrate. And, and, but then also, Lord, we thank you for being with us in those difficult times, those hard times of life that we don't like going through. Those times where we feel pain and sadness and grief so much destruction all around. Those times in our lives where we feel afraid, we feel like we're breaking up and, and where we just don't always understand where we are to make the next step. But we thank you, Lord, for always being with us and we thank you for the community of faith that we have in our community that stands with us at all times. And so, Heavenly Father, we remember those, those dates. But Lord, we just look back on them and just say that you are our God and that you are thankful, that you are our Heavenly Father. And so we turn to you always, that we need your, your, your embrace and your love. And we thank you for our, our earthly fathers this day as well and for being those people who love us and teach us and have been good examples for us in faith and in life. And we just help them, Lord, to understand just how important they are in their role. We pray for Pastor Bill and the youth of our church that are on a, a trip this week to Colorado. We pray, Lord, for safe travel. We pray for protection as they are going about their fun events. But also, Lord, that they can bond together in strength strength for you and in, in a strong strong faith that they may have and that may be molded and nurtured this week. So for the nations of this world and for our communities and for all that you provide in and through them, Lord, we give you thanks this day. We just pray that we may have the inner peace, the peace which surpasses all human understanding. And so this day, Heavenly Father, we pray for those hospitalized. We pray for Bob Pray. Bob Priest. We also pray this day, Heavenly Father, for others who are healing. We pray for Judy Harry, Elmer Fadado, Diane Hugh, Deanna Mito, and Shirley Obermeyer. We pray this day, Lord, for those who are serving in the armed forces. We pray for Colin Elliott, Chris Mito, Connor Meyer, Courtney Miller, Devin Palo, Jay Peer, David Seth, and Caleb Miller, Michael Toberheim, Timothy, and Timothy Thornton. In this day, Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. We pray for 
uh, Jeff and Holly Christensen and the death of Jeff's mother. We also pray this day for, well, for the Jardine family in the death of Steve. We pray for Deb and, and, and all of us who grieve his death. We pray, Lord, that you may be a source of comfort and strength for us during this time. So all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Let us pray together the offering prayer. 
God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we bring before you these offerings from our lives. Bless these gifts and use them in the work of your reign on earth. Give strength to the hands that labor, vision to minds that create, hope to lives who serve. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to God. The world feels more right and just when we give God praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son. He proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in a night in which he was betrayed, took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You're all welcome to the table of the Lord. Bound. 
fountains and deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed and you won't start now. And rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. And you are mine. Please stand. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with this heavenly food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Teaching moment. The blessing. God is always Father. Okay? Creator is a mode of God, but not God's name. Okay, so we always, it's actually condemned in the early church as modalism. So we always refer to God as Father. So being a protector and a defender of the faith, that's my job. <laughs> okay, so we always say our Father. Okay, that's who God is. That's his name. He's personal. He's living. And not in, 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 um impersonal, but always alive and who we can always call on as our Heavenly Father who loves us. So may God, our Father, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Spirit, our gift and advocate in life, bless us and renew us daily and conform us to his love. Amen. Well, let's close by singing, You Never Let Go. the shadow of death your perfect love is casting out fear and even when i'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life i won't turn back i know you are near and i will fear no evil for my god is with me and if my god is with me whom then shall i For the heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes We'll live to know you here on the earth And I will fear no evil For my God is with me and if my God is with me Whom then shall I
empty light that is coming with a heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Cause I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.